Alright guys, in today's video we have some more PlayStation related news and information to go over and discuss here. Some stuff I think you guys are definitely going to find interesting. The first thing we're going to be talking about has to do with Gran Turismo on the PlayStation 5 and how apparently Polyphony Digital is targeting up to 240 frames per second and they go on to talk about how they believe the frame rate is more of a priority than the resolution going into next generation. So that will be interesting. We're also going to be talking a little bit about Final Fantasy VII Remake as the file size for the game has recently been discovered and it's absolutely massive. So I kind of just want to warn everybody on this channel who's planning on getting this game. If you don't have the best internet, you might want to opt in for a physical copy of this game, which will also apparently be two discs. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the Uncharted movie because there's been a lot of interesting things happening over there that I want to discuss. Uh, more specifically, I want to talk about a few things that the actor Tom Holland, who is playing a young, young Nathan Drake, what he had to say about the movie. So yeah, if you think you're going to enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps it out more than you know. And be sure to hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't already done that. But starting here with Gran Turismo, says, we've already seen Gran Turismo Sport running in 8K resolution, but speaking with Australian media at a recent event, Polyphony Digital, Hancho Kazanori Yamauchi revealed that he believes 4K is good enough for games. The veteran believes that frame rate is much more important, and he's potentially aiming big for the PlayStation 5's first incarnation of the massive simulation racing series. In terms of frames per second, rather than staying at 60 FPS, I'm more interested in raising it to 120 frames per second or even 240 frames per second. I think that's what's going to be changing the experience from here on forward. Obviously, frame rate is extremely important in racing games as it leads to a smoother motion and tighter controls. Whether the PS5 will actually prove powerful enough to push these kind of numbers remains to be seen. However, Yamauchi admitted going from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2, there was a hundred times the performance difference between the two console generations. An advancement like that is no longer possible. So I thought this was a really interesting thing to relay to you guys because it, I think it goes to show that not all developers going into next generation, even those that are underneath Sony, because we know how much Sony likes that visual pop in their games and the visual fidelity, not every single developer is just going to be prioritizing pure resolution over frame rate. In fact, I think Sony is well aware, as well as the developers underneath Sony and third-party developers on top of that, they're all aware that one of the big things people are going to be looking for come next generation when we get the PlayStation 5 and the next generation Xboxes, not only 4K resolution and higher resolutions in general uh, more consistently, but obviously a higher frame rate and a more consistent frame rate across the board with almost all games. Um, we've heard both Sony and Microsoft tout with these new consoles 8K resolution, which is kind of ridiculous because nobody is expecting that, nor do I think anybody wants that. I mean, how many people do you know that own an 8K resolution screen? Probably nobody, and that's because it's just not practical. It's, it's something that if it's ever going to be practical and it's ever going to take the place of 4K, it's going to be years down the line from now, and so I think it's just smart of uh, developers to really prioritize frame rate as well as a higher resolution because we we can already expect most if not all games to run at native 4k and that's not to say that every game will of course there's going to be those that run a little bit under 4k but as long as we can get as close as we can to 4k while also maintaining a consistent 60 fps i think that's going to go a long way with gamers and that's what most people are going to be looking for um at least I'm going to be. I, I enjoy resolution. I like to see higher resolution games, but I really also enjoy frame rate probably even more because when you think about the act of playing a game, you need things to be smooth and you need it to just not, you know, you need frame rate to not be a problem. And this generation, we've seen some games come out that really could have used a higher frame rate. But because of the limitations of the current generation consoles, we didn't see that. So it's nice to hear that apparently Gran Turismo for the PlayStation 5, whatever it is they're working on, Polyphony Digital, they're going to be aiming for potentially up to 240 frames per second, which is insane. It's hard to say if they're going to be able to hit that, but uh, there you go. 
Moving on from that, we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake. It says, remember back at E3 2019 when Square Enix said that Final Fantasy VII Remake would ship on two Blu-ray discs? Well, it wasn't kidding. Images of the game's Korean cover have made it online, and the back of the box confirms that the long-awaited role-playing release will be at least 100 gigabytes in size. So yeah, that's an absolutely massive install, and so I just wanted to let everybody here know who's planning on playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, if this is something that you are interested in, then you're going to have to be aware that if you're buying it digitally and you plan to install it that way, it's going to take a while, and if you have really slow internet or really poor internet, um, you have really low download speeds, you're probably going to have to wait a while before you actually get to play it. So this is just kind of me relaying the information to everybody, letting you know that if you are that type of person who just doesn't have the best internet and you're trying not to wait days and days after a game releases to play it, a game like this, considering it's going to be 100 gigabytes, you might want to look into buying a physical copy. Either way, it's still going to be the same size, but there is a big difference between having the game install right through the disc onto the console. Um, and we also don't know if there's going to be like a day one update. I'm sure there is. We don't know the size of that. But either way, 100 gigabyte install, absolutely massive. So there you go. Moving on from that, though, we're going to talk a little bit about the Uncharted movie. It says here that the Uncharted movie has had a long and troubling production history. It lost six directors over time due to a number of reasons, ranging from creative differences to, uh, to scheduling conflicts. And then they list all of the directors here, all six that have actually left. Apparently, the director they're trying to get right now is the same guy who did Zombieland, Zombieland, Double Tap, and Venom. So this is the person that Sony's currently trying to get on as a director. It says, Meanwhile, while the search for the director is still going on, the shooting of the film was inevitably delayed, which in turn officially postponed the movie's release date. Um, and it says the original the theatrical launch date was supposed to be December 18th, 2020, but has now been delayed by Sony to March 5th. 2021. Actor Tom Holland, who will play a young Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie, is very much pumped to get the action going. And in an interview with IGN, this is what he had to say. I think what Uncharted offers that most video game films don't is that it's an origin story to the games. So if you play the games, you haven't seen what's going to happen in the film. And if you haven't played the games, you're going to enjoy the film because it's information that everyone else is getting at the same time. But I am super excited to make this movie, and it's been a long time coming. I read the newest draft of the script on the way over here, and it's one of the best scripts I've ever read. It really, really jumps off the page. I think Mark Wahlberg is going to do great as Sully, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Mark Wahlberg was originally cast as Nathan Drake himself, but as the script of the Uncharted Uncharted movie turned the protagonist into a much younger version of the character, Wahlberg's role changed into that of Drake's mentor Victor Sully Sullivan, which is incredibly interesting because, I mean, I've seen a, a lot of people are really down on this movie, understandably so, it sounds like it's really having some trouble, but for anybody who maybe is looking forward or at least trying to be hopeful that because this this movie's getting made no matter what that's clear sony is making sure that this uncharted movie gets made there's a lot of people who have the mindset they shouldn't be making this movie uh sony shouldn't worry about making movies in general based off of these games because they're already so cinematic i'm kind of indifferent to it i do think that sony could risk potentially damaging the ip if they don't handle it correctly but i want to believe that maybe there is hope for this i mean you know, the idea of Mark Wahlberg as Sully is really, really hard to visualize in my head. However, Tom Holland as a young Nathan Drake, I can definitely see that. And something else interesting that I came across, and this also comes from IGN, is apparently when talking to Tom Holland about this, he confirmed that this movie is going to draw heavy inspiration from specifically Uncharted 4. Now, for those who have played Uncharted 4, you'll know that there are a lot of sequences, a lot of flashbacks with young Nathan Drake. And so maybe that's what they're talking about because I can't imagine if they're getting Tom Holland to play a young Nathan Drake. They're definitely not talking about the parts where you're playing as an older Nathan Drake in Uncharted 4. So... I don't know, man. I mean, this is going to be a really interesting thing to pay attention to. Um, I'm going to read this this one other quote here that 
uh, Tom Holland had to say about the movie uh, when he was asked about it. He says, if I'm honest, one of my favorite video games ever is the fourth Uncharted game. Unbelievable. And lots of the inspiration from the film has come from that game in particular. It was interesting when I sat down with Sony Pictures chairman um, Tom Rothman and we were talking about the video games. I was like, oh, I've just finished Uncharted. And he was like, well, why don't you play Nathan Drake? I remember being like, would I would do anything to play Nathan Drake. Please, that would be amazing. So yeah, we start shooting in like four weeks. Mark Wahlberg is going to be amazing as Sully. The stunt department that we have out there in Berlin have done an amazing job already prepping the stunts, and it's going to be an exciting one. So, I mean, you know, of course he's involved in the project, so he's going to have positive things to say. He's not going to come out here and say anything negative, but I will say it's it's interesting. Tom Holland, I think most people consider him a good actor. I mean, I, I guess he's a pretty good actor. We know that he he's done really well as Spider-Man and the MCU. I haven't really seen anything else he's been in, but I can definitely see him as a young Nathan Drake, and it's really, I'd say, good to hear that he's saying such good things about the script. He's saying it's one of the best scripts he's ever read, so that, I think, is what this movie's really going to uh, live or die by. I think it's really going to come down to how how much they try to stay close to the source material. I think Neil Druckmann recently tweeted out after seeing the new Sonic movie, because that's apparently doing really well, said that he has this crazy idea that maybe in order for video game movies to be successful, they just have to be uh, close to the source material. They have to stick with the source material and not try to dramatically change things, like we've seen that happen many times in the past with other video game movies, and at that point, it just becomes, like, you know, if you look at, like, the Resident Evil movies, I mean, some of that stuff's just, like, what, what is happening here? Like, this isn't Resident Evil, what is going on, uh, based off of what I've seen anyway, but that does it for the video, guys. I'm starting to ramble here, but I really had to take some time to talk about this, specifically the Uncharted movie, because I think that it's really interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see how it all unfolds, and so at this point, I'm going to ask you to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think about Gran Turismo for P PlayStation 5 prioritizing frame rate over resolution? What do you think about the 100 gigabyte download size or file size for Final Fantasy VII Remake, and what do you think about Tom Holland's comments here on the Uncharted movie? Is the Uncharted movie something you are hoping will turn out to be good? Do you think it's going to be good, or do you think it's going to be a train wreck? Let me know down below. Again, leave the video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.